Hi, this is Learn With Me, where I try write a subgenre of music that I've not attempted to write before. Today, I'm going to try write thrash metal. Now, a little disclaimer, I have written metal probably about 15 years ago, but not really touched it since. I'm a fan of the genre though. Characteristics are usually fast tempos, low guitar riffs, high guitar solos, and aggressive vocals. The latter we will not be attempting today. I've been listening to Slayer, Metallica, Lamb of God, and Kitty for inspiration. I'll be using Ableton Live for this session. So I'm going to start off by creating the drums and a rough structure of the song. And I'm going to be using addictive drums. So I'm going to do like a standard rock beat for this. Obviously, we need to make this a lot faster. Let's try 190. Yeah, that sounds sounds good speed. I don't like the sound of the kick, or the whole kit for that matter. So let's look at some of these presets to save some time. Power metal, let's have a listen to this. Hmm. Yeah, that's more like it. Let's get some hi-hats in there and a cymbal. I should say that probably when I was in my first couple bands, Growing up, um, we probably some of the sound probably verged on the metal sound, but it wasn't thrash metal. Yeah, that's a good start. Let's put in a fill just to start off the song, and maybe just a snare roll. I want it longer than that. Change these velocities so it's almost like a natural roll up. Let's extend this a little bit so we can, so the symbol isn't hitting so frequently. Add a little fill in there. Let's have slightly more open hi hats as well. Now I'm thinking for the second part, we have some double pedals going on. Changing the velocity so it sounds a little bit more realistic as well. It wasn't done on purpose, but I actually quite like that gap in the kick drum in that last section. And then I'm thinking this next bit, we just have the double pedals continuing on. And then for this next bit, I'm going to start making the snare hit on every one, just to really bring in that thrash sound. And I'm also going to make sure the velocity is up on these snare hits, just for those ones where they're hitting individually. And I'm just going to copy this a couple times around just so we can start laying down some guitar. So I'm going to be putting my guitar through the NUX preamp that I have down here. And I'm going to keep that clean. And I'm going to use my Earthquaker Devices Hatumitas, which is a fuzz pedal. I don't actually know if I'm pronouncing that correctly or not, but it sounds amazing. So this is it on clean. And then with that on. I'm going to have to slow the tempo down a bit because I haven't played this style. Um, I've never really tried thrash metal before, but even when I've done heavier stuff, I used to be able to do quite fast, like, but I'm, I'm struggling quite a bit. So I'm going to actually slow down the tempo just a tad um, so my fingers can keep up.
think that was okay. Um, before I forget the part, I'm going to quickly put it down on bass. So while I tune, I should mention that oh, actually the guitar is in drop C already. Um, so I'm just going to drop this down to C as well. listen to that bass on its own. Let's get a compressor on there just to really boost it. I just realized I've got a compressor pedal and I wasn't even using it. Let's use glue compressor. Cool. And let's go. Let's solo the guitar and put a, a low cut on this. Okay, that should sound a little bit cleaner. It's sounding pretty flashy. I want to add another guitar on that. I would really like to do a, another guitar part as well, like another rhythm part and pan one left to right just to get that kind of thickness. Um, the only issue is I don't know if I'm going to remember that part exactly, which maybe I could just re-record the first guitar. That's always an option. So let's jump on the guitar. So I'm going to have everything set up as I did on the last guitar part, but this time around I'm going to change the pickup selector to the treble setting so the guitar sounds a little bit different, got a bit more higher end on this one. What I did there was, when we got to the second section, I kept the guitar high up. Um, I realized the level's quite low, so I'm going to increase that. But when we come back into this new section, I might just remove the other guitar and see how it sounds. Because on the bass and that second guitar part, I just stay on the 12th fret. Okay, I might try to do some like shrill guitar stuff, shrill guitar stuff over this bit. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to increase that fuzz pedal a bit more. If you're, if you're really into a thrash right now, I hope I'm not offending you because I'm really trying my best here. <laughs> I think what I'm going to do is jump on bass and try to come up with like a slightly different rhythm section for this kind of solo-esque section. And I think I'm going to use the fuzz pedal on the bass now, so... Something like that, but I want more higher end on this. Let's try to put this through the a guitar preamp. Oh yeah, that's more like it. 
I'm also going to just mute this other guitar for now because I feel like it's confusing me a little bit. And then we'll re-record that. We can follow the bass. Okay, let's go for it. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to now replace that second guitar with another part that matches a bit better. Considering I just wrote that, I can't actually remember what it was. <laughs> That's the one. I think what I'd like to do is re-record the first two guitar parts in that intro because they're a little bit sloppy. So I'm going to re-record them now. Okay, so I've panned one guitar slightly to the right and one of the other ones slightly to the left just to give that slight stereo wide sound. Um, and now I'm going to go back on the bass and try write another couple of sections, I think. So I'm going to go to clean for this next section. Uh, on the bass, and then probably try write a second section that has the the fuzz pedal back on it. Something like that, I'm going to report that in. Yeah, I think there's some good stuff in there. I'm going to now jump on guitar and play the exact same part. Before I play that part, actually, I'm just going to quickly tighten up that part. So I've changed the I've changed the kit part a little bit, cleaned up the bass. I didn't realise I played so sloppily, but I guess I did. Alrighty then, let's get this guitar sounding heavy. Okay, let's record this other guitar part. Let me try and 
try that again. I think it's almost there, but my playing's a little bit sloppy. It's it's hard to do this style. It's very hard. <laughs> clean this up a bit. I think when I, I want to go to those open bits when the bass changes to the distortion as well. Yeah, that sounds cool. Right, I think I need some kind of like leady part for this. So let's change the guitar tone again. I've gone back to a clean channel on the guitar preamp and then using back the fuzz, the Earthquaker fuzz. Okay, I'm just going to jam along for these first couple just to try to come up with a part that works. I like that little part I just did then when it uh, went lower, so I'm going to record that before I forget it. Just that little last bit, just maybe something we can use, but I'm pretty happy with some of that. I mean, all this needs a bit of tidying up for sure. Okay, so first thing I think we need to have is some crossfades because these these changes are quite jarring. I think probably because I've been changing the uh, sound of the guitar quite frequently. So I make sure the double pedals continue until that actual stop happens. Yes, the stop actually happens on the bar. So, in fact, let's add like a drum fill up some toms, if I can find the toms. Where are these toms? Yeah, with addicted drums I always forget where the toms are. Sounds pretty cool, so... I'm also going to, to make the drums sound a bit cooler, we're going to use this Wave plugin, Magna, BB Tubes, which I th I've used a lot in these in this video series because it's just it's just really good and I'll put bass relief on because the bass relief's really handy in this this plugin because it saturates the mids and highs really nicely but it doesn't do too well with low end I don't think anyway so this bass relief kind of stops it from affecting the low end so you, you can push it harder and it's really you get really good results out of it Yeah, that's sitting a bit better, I think. I think I want the drums to change for this next section. This bit. There we go, that with more straight playing. Or just more double pedals in this bit. I guess, yeah, I'm going to make that 
Go double the speed. Oh, this kind of sounds like a big fill. I quite like how the guitar is on its own for that little bit as well. I think the drums need to do something new as well, just to add some interest. Hmm, maybe we should have a, uh, maybe we should slow it down in this section. I always imagine like Slayer, Ditto Head, when it has that change. Um, I always, I used to love that song. Yeah, I know, the, the whole kick drum and da, da. <laughs> okay, so. I think at this point I want, yeah, like a tempo change. That's cool, cool. And then they copy this. A bit more intense than that. So maybe I have the double pedaling coming in. And let's have it hitting symbols. Or... I'm going to do the bass again first and then do the two guitar parts. So I've got a, I'm going for another like quite heavy bass to sound, distorted. Mind that, I'm gonna jump on guitar. I wonder how this guitar sounds through the exact same channel we've just used on for the bass. Ooh, it's quite thick. Quite like that. It's very quiet. Yeah. That's quite a cool sound. I'm gonna stick with that. I think I'd prefer to maybe palm mute that actually, but I'm going to keep that part for now. I'm also going to change the pickup selector for treble. that little end bit actually that's quite a nice little addition right 
I'm going to do the next guitar part. I think I'm going to do another palm muted thing and change the pickup select. So, got a bit more of a deeper one. pretty cool actually I liked I really liked that last bit with the two they're all I mean it was a total mistake but it's almost like a call and response between the two guitars it's cool okay so I kind of want to write or have some kind of lead part over all this and I'm also going to use that other guitar up the um that one I recorded before that wasn't part muted and we're going to have that G coming as well halfway through just to thicken up that rhythm section yeah it's very subtle but definitely adds something so let's get a nice lead sound okay so what i've kind of ended up going with is double double overdrive <laughs> the noise on this is crazy so i'm just going to try record straight away some interesting stuff in that i'm going to uh, put the guitar away and let's tidy some of this stuff up okay, so that last thing was very cool i want to firstly tie up these stab bits because i quite like the idea you're not really hearing much i want some kind of texture in there but i'm not sure which which instrument's going to come from but let's first start with the bass Let's just cut out these bits and then we can bring stuff back in if it's sounding a bit too clean. In fact, let's do it with all the instruments. This might be too extreme, but let's see how it sounds. Just adding the low cut on these guitars. I'm actually pushing them a bit further because just to make it sound a bit cleaner. I'm just going to copy that second part to the first part because I think I hit a slight wrong note. I, I feel like I'm hearing like slight digital distortion, so I, I don't know. The level's fine on my interface. So I think there's something going on with my pedal board there because, yeah, there's some nasty kind of digital distortion that I'm kind of hearing on this, so I do apologise for that. I think I want the drums to follow that. Duh, duh. So let's first add a 
kick drum and sna uh, kick drum and cymbal for this new section. <laughs> the idea we go back to this intro section for the final bit almost like bookend it oh we want to go back to the original tempo don't we in fact that'd be quite cool for this little bit it starts to speed up again so i think what i'm going to do with these rhythm guitars for this section is add some reverb and automate the dry signal down and automate the wet signal up so we start to get this kind of airy fill just before we get back into that kind of dry uh, last section. So I'm just going to use an Ableton reverb for this. Let's try the hybrid reverb. That's kind of perfect actually. So we just have to automate that, that wet and dry signal. And then let's copy this for the other guitar as well. And luckily it's copied the automation, saving us some time. I'm trying to think out what we can do with this lead. I quite like the, the tone of it. I know I copied this as the first section. I'm going to delete that first part and just bring this second part to it. I'm also going to copy that reverb into this kind of lead part as well. I'm also going to change the automation so it's it's a lot less of a wet signal and then it just creeps in for those last two parts. So now that's blending a bit better into those sections. So I think I'm going to leave it there. This is three minutes of a tune. It's... um. It's a hard genre to do, not only just for the fast playing. I haven't played like that in a while. And even then, I was, you know, this was years ago. And I probably, back then, I wouldn't have said I was any good at it. I'm just going to tighten a couple little bits up. I'm probably going to just do quick mixing. For the uh, for the mastering, I'm just going to use Ozone 11, um, which I didn't get that long ago. Very impressed with it. I remember using Ozone 3 years ago, and I used to love it. It was so good. And that was the last version of Ozone I'd used until I recently bought Ozone 11. So far, it's pretty cool. I've not used it on any like, professional mixes or anything yet. I've only used it on like kind of demoing just for quick throwing on a master. But I will be doing an EP soon, which I'll be testing out properly for that. And then we'll have a playthrough.
now. Yeah, interesting. I I feel like listening to it now all the way, I feel like it's it's like older school, fresh rather than like modern, fresh. I also think it needs, you know, some kind of really screamy vocal over that, which I definitely wouldn't be able to accomplish myself. <laughs> but I, th- I like some of the parts. Um, it's definitely definitely a genre I'd like to try again. I think I'm not fully happy with this, um, but I've only spent like maybe like an hour and a half on it. I definitely think I'd like to warm my arms up a bit more as well because the fast playing, you know, it's something I haven't redone really for 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 quite a while. I think also hearing it as well. I think some of the lead parts could be a lot cooler. Um, the whole thing, I think, could be kind of cooler. Um, but again, first attempt. I also think maybe using maybe some different pedals as well might have helped. You know, not necessarily just using fuzz. Maybe some more tube screamers would have helped. Maybe even a different guitar, like rather than a telly, maybe using a Les Paul, using some humbuckers, get some thicker sound. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, thanks for watching. Until next time.